even ask each candidate to author a position paper on their views of the U.S.-Israel relationship, so it's clear where they stand on the subject. In 1990, Democrat Harry Lonsdale challenged the Republican senator from Oregon, Mark Hatfield. The word that I was pro-Israel got around, he said. Lonsdale described a visit to APAC headquarters during his campaign. It was an experience I will never forget. It wasn't enough that I was pro-Israel. I was given a list of vital topics and quizzed, read, grilled, for my specific opinion on each. Actually, I was told what my opinion must be and exactly what words I was to use to express those opinions in public. Shortly after the encounter at APAC, I was sent a list of American supporters of Israel that I was free to call for campaign contributions. I called, they gave, from Florida to Alaska. There's a reason Bill Clinton referred to APAC as better than anyone else lobbying in this town. Life is good on APAC's good side, but another reason why APAC is so effective is its ability to punish those who incur its wrath. In one stark example, Americans will remember what happened in February of 2019 when journalist Glenn Greenwald reported on Twitter that Kevin McCarthy was seeking to reprimand representatives Ilhan Omar and Rashida Tlaib over their criticisms of Israel. Ilhan Omar, the newly elected Somali-American representative from Minnesota's 5th Congressional District, responded with six words. It's all about the Benjamin's baby. But Omar was far from finished. When asked, would love to know who Ilhan Omar thinks is paying American politicians to be pro-Israel. Omar replied with one word, APAC. Trump called on her to resign. And I think she should resign from Congress, frankly. Hello, good people, it's Rob Lee. So Trump wanted her to resign for telling the truth. Let me say it again, for telling the truth. If you did not watch our previous video, she turned on Israel forever, I would urge you to do so. Uh, a brother and sister both told me it was one of the best videos that uh, we've ever put out. Israel has the most brutal, undisciplined, unprincipled military in the world, as has been demonstrated by their repeated killing of civilians, women, children, and without any regard, they will attack hospitals and members of the press and they get away with this because they have been given carte blanche to do this evil, not by Jehovah Father and not by Jesus Christ, but by the Western cowards, Western nation cowards. And if you accuse them of being any, anything or oppose them, they will call you as they will call you terrorist. They started this in the United States where everybody's a terrorist if they speak out against Israel. So be it. I'm with Jesus. I asked the Jewish people the synagogue of Satan, the, all the leaders, the bankers, the, uh, all these people, the merchants of Babylon, the synagogue of Satan, all evil, top that. Jesus Christ has been given all power, all of it, and I'm, I'm with him. You top that. Interestingly, most of you know that communism came from the synagogue of Satan. This is exactly the habit of the Soviets back in the old days of the Soviet Union. Anyone who would speak out against them was an enemy of the state. So it may work in their world, but it's irrelevant in the fathers and Jesus' children. Israel is going to escalate this, this what's going on in the Middle East. And I believe it may lead to World War III and the end of it all. When I say the end of it all, I do mean the final part, the final act of the Great Tribulation. It should be noted that a sizable minority of the Palestinians are Christian and have nothing to do with Hamas or Muslim beliefs. Where are the so-called Christians, brothers and sisters of these Palestinians who love Jesus Christ? Where are they at? You will not find them in churches because they're not, they're not there for Jesus Christ. You will not find them wearing red hats, screaming Trump, or marching to the tune of we must support Israel like mindless zombies. For many called, as Jesus said, but few chosen. Yet I tell you right now that, you, that your father is going to bring the same pain to the followers and lovers of the synagogue of Satan as those people in Gaza are going through. It will happen. 
Jesus is the light, and we who walk and follow him do not walk in the darkness. We do not walk with godless zombies. The Gaza genocide has reshaped views on Israel. Things have changed forever. For the first time ever in the modern world of technology, Israel is being turned on. Many people will never see them the same. Praise Jehovah for this. However, this makes them and their followers desperate and willing to do anything to keep their delusional power status, including false flags and state-sponsored hoaxes. Now, before I show you the predicted false flag, I want to share something with our people and to remind the enemy, the, to remind the enemy of Jesus Christ, who is the Son of Jehovah, who has all power. I want to remind them of something and for you to be, to you to carry this with you. Read with me as we read John chapter 15, verse 5, the words of Jesus Christ. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me you can do nothing. For without me you can do nothing. It does not say without Google. Churches, politicians, doctors, nurses, policemen, the military, the synagogue of Satan, the Jews, the Pope, the World Health Organization, professors, corporations, governments, or anybody else. It says without Jesus, you can do nothing. That's power. That's truth. The synagogue of Satan needs a false flag, and they need it right away. They need much needed sympathy to redirect attention away from their crimes in Gaza. Like I said, for the first time, people are criticizing them. They don't know what to make of this. They need a distraction. They need eyes to look away from them and to look someplace else. They need to, for people to believe their lie. They need sympathy. They need another hoax. They need, they need an, another false flag. They need to stir the minds of the delusional people to see them as the poor victims, not the children of the devil, as Jesus called them in John 8, 44. They must be the victim, not the people that Jehovah said in 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 14. Not the people that the Father said murdered Jesus, killed the prophets, are contrary to all men, cannot please the Almighty Father, and his wrath is on them at the uttermost. They need sympathy. They need a false flag. A former Israeli prime minister on Monday, this is last Monday, warned the United States that it would face the consequences if it failed to fully back the war against Hamas and radical Islamic terrorism. Let's read what he has to say, shall we? And you're going to see that he's predicting the false flag for you. But they won't call it a, a, a false flag. And I quote, he says, we're fighting total evil and we might be imperfect, but we're doing everyone's job and the world should back Israel. This is Neftali Bennett told this to CNN. Otherwise, he says, everyone's going to face it. These zombie murderers are going to come right over here talking about to the United States. So he is telling you the false flag is coming. The staged attack is coming. An event to galvanize the godless zombie nation to reach down in their zombie bodies and bank accounts and support the synagogue of Satan. The news media, which is owned and operated by the same evil that God condemned, will paint the narrative of how the Islamic terrorists are here, and this is what happens when you don't support God's children. You will be attacked. The problem is the synagogue of Satan are not God's children. Now. I have made it clear I don't have any love for Muslims. I do not adhere to Muslims any more than I would to Buddhists or Hindu or anybody else. I've made it clear. If it's not from my father, who is Jehovah and Jesus, I don't really care about anybody's religion. Every single bit of it is a complete lie. I don't care where it comes from. It's a lie. There's only one God, and there's only one Son of God, Jesus Christ. Everything else is a complete lie. So, 
let's keep talking about this false flag. Okay, because this is important. The Israeli and Western Nations Coalition of the United States and Canada, and Germany and the UK and France and so many other nations is a sick animal. And a sick animal is most dangerous just before it dies. And that's what I believe that we're looking at. An animal that's wounded and it's hurt and scared and it's evil. And it knows that it's on the cusp of losing some power because we're in the middle of the, the great prophecy of we're seeing God's word and his, his words come, come to pass, just as he said it is going to. I would like to read something to you. When plunder becomes a way of life for a group of men in a society, over the course of time, they create for themselves a legal system that authorizes it and a moral code that glorifies it. Thus they and all that follow and support them have denied God and will pay the ultimate price. And that's what we have here. When you talk about the ethnic cleansing of the Palestinians, the Israeli supporters in this nation are guilty of the genocide of Gaza, the churchgoers, just as guilty. Who do you think has propped them up and funded them and supported them for decade after decade, the most delusional people in the United States? Interestingly, these same people, these churchgoers, these Trump people, did not speak out at all during the past 25 years when the synagogue of Satan brought men from other nations to genocide them and eradicate their cultures and ruin them. When we had men from the Middle East, Africa, and Central and South America come to this nation, you did not see these people speaking out. Wonder why? Well, they didn't get their cue from the synagogue of Satan that it was okay to take their hands off of their collective mouths and speak out. The churchgoer, the right-wing Fox News watcher, are the greatest lovers and supporters of the state of Israel. They, along with all politicians, are like mindless zombies. They will love and support the synagogue of Satan even at their own demise, even at the own demise and peril of their own children, their grandchildren. The state of Israel cannot be pleased. It does not matter if you gave it the entire world. It would complain and want more. If it had no enemies in the entire world, it would have to create one because this is what it does because it is godless, pretending to be of God. Jesus Christ says, he that is of the, of the Father doeth the Father's will. The synagogue of Satan makes demands, and even if all demands were met, they would want more and more because that's what evil is and does. Evil wakes up and does evil, and only the naive and blind keep feeding it. So we're told on October the 7th of 2023 that Hamas, launched a brutal terrorist attack on an innocent Israel. Yet we know that the international bankers and their arms of evil, like the Mossad, fund and control many of these groups. God Almighty has taught us about false flags. Yes, he has. If one really believes in God the Father, Jehovah, and his son Jesus, then surely you will believe and trust the Father, Jesus, and their words. If Jesus calls the people the children of the devil, and he most certainly did in John 8, 44, if Jesus tells the people you are responsible for all the righteous blood that's ever been shed on this earth, Matthew chapter 23, would any reasonable thinking person expect the people that Jesus said this to to be honest? Psalms 58.3 says, The wicked are estranged from the womb. They go astray as soon as they be born, speaking lies. Not speaking the truth, but speaking lies. Three years ago, we were presented with one of the biggest lies in recent history. We were told to take this poison to make it better. 
And, you know, the lie has been so big that it, I, I told you then it's not going to go away. They can't. They can't roll it back up. Almost all the pharmaceutical companies in the entire world are owned by the synagogue of Satan. The medical industry is one of the most evil and corrupt institutions on this earth. You will never hear a commercial from the likes of Merck or Pfizer saying to consult God. It's always consult your doctor and then your doctor is going to point you to this potion. This is pharmacia, spoken of in the book of Revelation when Jesus said, that his children, his people, have been exposed to this sorcery. And that's where, you know, the word pharmacia comes from, pharmacy, potions, pills. But there's another kind of sorcery. It's through the internet, it's through the television, it's through words, it's through the, in it's through the internet. The media, which is owned and operated by the synagogue of Satan and its agents, were telling the masses nonstop to take the poison to make you better because it's the right thing to do. This lie was a false flag. It was a terrorist attack by the greatest terrorist the world has ever known and the greatest hypocrites to ever walk this earth. The greatest liars, terrorists, and hypocrites that the world has ever known are telling you, Take this poison and it'll make it better. Now, if that's not a terrorist attack, attack what is? The Levon affair, decades ago, the Mossad posed as Egyptian Muslims. They did attacks in Egypt. Then in turn, tried to blame it on the Egyptians over what's the known as the Suez Canal. This was about money and control. Yet it never changes. In 1962, the Israeli-controlled government of the United States came up with Operation Northwoods. Now, this is for the international banking cartel who needed a war. We had to have a war. This was a plan. Operation Northwoods was to blow up American ships, shoot down American planes, and then blame it on Cuba and Castro. This would enable the bankers who control all militaries to invade Cuba. In September of 2001... The Twin Towers were blown up. A plane was shot down. There were hijackings, and there was a hole blown in the Capitol building in D.C. Now, it does not matter how they did it. I've told you that I believed it was direct energy weapons. I've shared my thoughts on that through the years. However, on that same day, five young Mossad agents were poured over in New Jersey, driving a U-Haul with a painting on the side of it of a plane flying into the Twin Towers. They were called the Dancing Israelis due to a woman called the police and said she'd seen them dancing right around the same time the towers were hit. These five agents were detained by the FBI and held for two months. They were released. And on returning to Tel Aviv, they went on TV and said, and I quote, we were there to document the event. We were there to document the event. No prison time. It was dropped. Before we talk further about the coming false flag, read with me of what describes the United States of, of America. Isaiah chapter 5 verses 20 and 21. Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil, that put darkness for light and light for darkness, that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Woe unto them that are wise in their own eyes and prudent in their own sight. This describes the United States and all Western nations. You see, evil has become good, and people that do good are called evil. The darkness is now called the light. And the light that is Jesus Christ is rejected, and it's now called the darkness. And we live in a nation where everybody is wise in their own eyes and prudent in, in their own sight. And yet they know nothing. Because if you don't know the Father, and you don't know the Son that came from the Father, you know absolutely nothing. Nothing. Through control of the Western nation's news media and the Internet, the synagogue of Satan will use this false flag and or hoax to play in the media 
and the internet nonstop means this will become something that will play for weeks and months. And we are going to see the naive, delusional people will say, see those poor people being oppressed when it's just the opposite. You see, something's going to happen that they need to, they need to galvanize their base. They know there's some people that are never going to support them, but even their base is kind of starting to look and say, what is, what is, what's all this talk about, about you killing all these people? Leaders are walking out on them. People are afraid to side with them. There's always going to be people that are going to side with them, but you see people starting to walk away from them. I believe this is from the Father, turning people against Mystery Babylon, which is Jerusalem. Father Reed refers to it as a whore. It's very deep. It's in the book of Revelation. You can expect this false flag soon. I do mean very soon. The mask is coming off. People are starting to see these monsters for what they are. And these monsters are going to become more and more desperate as the United States falls right along the side of it. The drums of war are, are beating and it's getting louder. The synagogue of Satan supporters, the Trump junkies and the churchgoers who do not worship the Father and simply do not care about Jesus, all these people are going to feel and see the same pain that's been going on in Gaza. Those who have held the hand of the devil's children will go the way of the devil's children. Three-fourths of the world is ignoring the carnage and the injustice that is going on in Gaza. You see, it only matters when people experience it personally. Don't fear, people in the United States, those who have denied Jesus. You will experience it very, very, very soon. You know a couple sits down in front of their 65-inch TV and they watch their version of reality on their tell evil vision. The headlines read, Israel Hamas war has Hezbollah terrorists fire at Israeli, Israeli civilians from Lebanon. Live now from Fox. Why is Hamas or Hezbollah or the Houthi the terrorist? Why is not the synagogue of Satan the terrorist? After all, Who's right? Fox News. I mean, who's right? Who's right here? Laura Ingram and Sean Hannity? Is it the local pastors and preachers at the 501c3 churches? Is it the Jews? Is it the, the professors? The delusional couple that's watching the TV? Who's right? If God called these people far worse than terrorists to himself and cast condemned them, who would be right? If Jesus Christ looked at a people and said, I blame you for everything, how could Jesus Christ be wrong and God be wrong, but these people be right? Because these people do not acknowledge the Father or Jesus. They give a little bit of lip service, a little bit of lip service, just to make themselves feel good. Jesus Christ said in the book of Revelation, because you are neither hot nor cold, you are lukewarm, I will spew you out of my mouth. There are fake shootings, false attacks, and bombings once a week in the synagogue of Satan-controlled media. In the past 20 years, we've seen hundreds of flat-out hoaxes. And I do mean hoaxes, sometimes so obvious that you have to wonder who, who writes the scripts but the TV watchers will eat it up. The Americans are working with minds of mush. They believe anything the tell evil vision tells them. If you want to distract the people from what's going on, the truth with the Father and Jesus Christ, give them a TV or a cell phone. Give them a stage shooting once every week or two weeks. Roll out the crisis actors. Give them a fake kidnapping. Oh, they love that. Even better, give them a murder case. And they will watch this, and they will watch it every day as if their lives depend on it. Why is this important? 
because it's coming and it's coming in droves and the big one will come and it may be used to drastically change things as we see this nation fall to its knees for its denial and mockery of the Son of God, Jesus. The Israeli synagogue of Satan needs some more false flags. They need some more Hollywood production to remove angry eyes from their criminal acts. The churches will hold vigils. There will be breaking news on every channel, and it will be run nonstop because that's what cable news is. It's nonstop lies. And they will interview the crisis actors, and they will interview local pastors and priests, and there will be prayer services, and there will be t people talking about, we've got to, we need to change the laws, and we've got to take the nation back, and we've got to protect ourselves, and you know what? Israel was right. Israel was right. And the word terrorism and terrorist will be used repeatedly, just as it was in 2001, 2002, 2003, and 2004, nonstop. When they went and got a man with the IQ of 80 named George Bush Jr. And all he could say is, you're either with us or you with the terrorist. Over and over and over. That was, that was the sound bite. As the real terrorists were the ones who were behind the whole thing. There will be pictures and videos of the false flag to captivate the perverted minds and spiritless bodies of Americans and all Western nations. And the culprit is probably going to be a Muslim because that's who Israel's having the problems with right now. The script is written. We've seen the predictive programming by Naftali Bennett the former Israeli prime minister who said, it's coming here. The script is written. It's just a matter of implementing the stage and moving the actors and putting everybody in place and then rolling the camera. And then we will see those that God has condemned doing what they do best. They are telling lies and the people will choose the lie over the truth. And the truth is the love and the light that is found in the Son of Jehovah and our blessed Savior, Jesus. And this is why the people believe the lie. Because if you're not loving Jesus Christ first, you are going to live the lie. As we get ready to close, I, cho I turn your attention to John 3, verses 35 and 36. I've told you all before how much Jehovah loves his son, that he gave his son all of it. Read with me here, though. John 3, verses 35 and 36. The Father loveth the Son, and hath given all things in, in, into his hand. Let's read that again. The Father loveth the Son. Jehovah loves Jesus, and has given all things to his Son. He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life, and he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. Can the words of Jesus be any clearer? Life is about this. Are you with Jesus or are you not? We see the masses of all Western nations are under the control of the synagogue of Satan. Even the people that are speaking out for Gaza, almost the vast majority of them are atheists. They're not lovers of Jesus Christ either. What you're seeing here, folks, is the Father moving all this because we're seeing prophecy come true. Our Father and Jesus love us. They are here with us and are here for us always. Prayer is your greatest weapon. It is your water. It's your food, your shelter, your lights. It's your heat. It's your cooling. It's your gun. It's, it's, your, it's your fuel. It's, it's your everything. It's your guidance. It's your compass. It's your navigation. It's your peace. It's your strength. And it comes from the Father. Through Jesus Christ, prayer, it's your counsel. Who's going to take better care of you than your Father in Jesus Christ? Are you going to rely on the synagogue of Satan, churches, governments, corporations, and Mystery Babylon to take care of you when you know they despise you? Our Father in Jesus Christ will take care of their own. Prayer is our words talking with our Father in Jesus. Prayer is private. It's personal. I don't like praying with other people. I like praying by myself. It's a deep way of staying close to our Father in Jesus because we all need help.
Sometimes we need help every day, and that's okay. If you got to go to your father 10 times a day in the name of Jesus for help, so be it. Your father don't mind. Trust me when I tell you, he don't mind. We were told to pray for a reason. This life is not about anything but our father and Jesus. Now, we're going to see really bad times come upon this earth, and your way to deal with all this is prayer. And then when the Father moves in you, because everyone that is of God has, has a spirit, Romans 8, 14. If you don't have this spirit, you're not of God. God will move that spirit to think certain things, to feel certain things. He will move you to do, and you do it. You don't question it. You do it. You act on it. Thank you for being here. I will put out my next video in about a week, uh, a very important teaching about dealing with these times. Very important. May the Father bless each and every one of you. and and the name that is above all names, because the scripture says that his name is above all names. And he don't have but one name. His name is Jesus. In the name of Jesus, amen.